Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Lille and today I'm gonna teach you a very very cool trick. We're gonna talk about chromatic aberration. So let's understand first what is chromatic aberration. Well chromatic aberration is a, a thing that happens inside of camera inside of lenses. It's actually a sort of like defect. It's something that you normally don't want to have on your pictures, but it can add a little bit of extra realism to some of your renders because it gives this sort of like a not perfect look, which we normally try to avoid in the 3D world. So the way this works usually is that light is supposed to be focused by the lens of our camera and um, that focused uh, light will impact, of course, the, um, the sensors and everything and you'll get like your clean image. However, if by any, like for whatever reason, there are imperfections on the lens or on the ambient itself, you will bend the light and the focus points will not be perfectly like aligned and you'll get this sort of effect. Again, this one's a little bit exaggerated, uh, but it's um, it looks very, very interesting. So I'm gonna show you real quick how to do this. And um, it's actually really, really interesting. Shoutouts to to Matt D from the Autodesk forums. This is where I found the answer. He was sharing his technique and it's really, really interesting. I'm gonna explain how he does it. So you're gonna create a sphere and you're gonna squash it down to create pretty much a lens, okay? So this is pretty much us creating our own lens. And then to this lens, you're gonna right click and you're gonna assign a new material and it's gonna be an Arnold AI standard surface material, very basic. Now, you're gonna remove the color or just turn it off and you're gonna go to transmission and you're gonna turn transmission all the way up. By default, the transmission is uh, set to off. Now, uh, if we were to render this now with the transmission turned on, the, the by default, the index of refraction is set to 1.5. Let me show you the result. This is what we would see. We would see a sort of like distorted effect on the character. Right now we're seeing some weird like artifacts and stuff. That's because I think let me redo it. I'm going to assign a new material. Arnold, AI standard surface. There you go. So again, we don't need color and we're going to turn on the transmission like that. Once we do that, if we render, it's pretty much like if we're watching the character through a glass, right? Through a lens. Now, the problem with this, of course, is that the lens is really rough and we're not really seeing the character. So we need to bring the roughness all the way down to zero. And that will give us a like super clean and transparent uh, glass. However, it's going to distort our image a little bit. And this is due to something called index of refraction, where the light is being bent by the, the glass. If you want to avoid having that, you, you could have that if you want to have like some sort of like magnifying effect. But if you want, you need to lower this IOR to something like a 1.01. .01. With that done, as you're about to see, now we're gonna get pretty much the exact same render that we had before, because it's pretty much like we're just adding a, a glass on top of the whole thing. Now, here's where the magic happens. You're gonna go to the dispersion aberration, which is the like chromatic aberration that the glass is like creating, and you're gonna use something like a number one, like let's say a value of one. I'm gonna save this snapshot just to compare, and when we do this, look at this we get all of this chromatic aberration. Now, don't worry, as the image gets cleaner and cleaner, things are gonna get like blurred out. And now you're gonna see that we get this very, very cool effect. Not only do we get more like camera grain and noises everywhere, you can see, for instance, here, we have the blue and the red channel showing a little bit more. So we get a really, really cool looking effect. Now, keep in mind, this does increase render time quite significantly because it needs to do extra calculations, but you're gonna get something that looks really, really interesting. Now, if you bring this even lower to something like a 0.1, for instance, it's gonna be really, really extreme, okay? So we're, we're shifting the layers, the red, green, and blue layers on our character, and we're really pushing them. Now, this effect is gonna be more noticeable the more you go to the borders of your image. You can see the spheres right here, see how like far out we're like splitting the images, and on the center and the focus point, it's not that much. So it gives a really, really interesting effect. I, of course, think 0.1 is way too much. Let's try something like a 0.8 for, for my particular scene right here, and if we render, we should get a little bit of chromatic aberration without impacting everything. Now, there's a couple of things that you need to know about this uh, particular process. First of all, we are like dirtying up a little bit of render passes. So if you wanna do this with render passes, it might not be the best option. If you're gonna be using render passes, you're probably gonna be doing this sort of chromatic aberration trick later on inside the compositing software, such as Nuke or After Effects or something like that. Another thing you can see here, and let me actually show you, I'm gonna save this image as a reference again. And if I hide the sphere for just a second and we render again, look at the brightness of the sphere. See that? 
So what's happening here is we now have two extra layers of glass in front of the camera. Therefore, the reflections don't have enough like strength to go straight through the element. And that's why we get a black reflection right here. So if we want to bring back those reflections as well, because they're important, we need to go to our render settings. We need to go to Arnold Renderer and on Ray Depth, we need to increase the Ray Depth. For instance, I would suggest at least four on Diffuse, four on Specular and something like 16 on Transmission, which is the transparent thing. So now if we go back here, you're going to see, well, we haven't turned on our sphere. Let's turn our lens back on. And there we go. So now, as you can see, we're back to seeing the uh, the reflections on the sphere and we uh, get our chromatic aberration. So a really, really cool way to add that extra little level of like realism to our images without having to um, to like destroy or do anything in post-production. Now, one final thing that I want to mention before um, we close this super small and short video is that um, you do want to make sure to parent this lens to the camera. Okay, so you select this thing, select the camera and hit parent. Why? Because if we move the camera, we want that lens to always be following us. You can push the left lens forward or backwards, and that's, of course, going to change the way uh, things look as well. Uh, but yeah, that's a really, really cool trick to get some chromatic aberration. On the thumbnail, you probably saw the super exaggerated effect. Again, if we go to something like a 0 0.01, for instance, really, really, really low, you're going to see this thing just like shift completely all of place, all over the place. But it gets like it creates some interesting things. Now, remember that anything that you see right here can be animated. So I could do an animation of the camera going from this super like out of focus thing to super neat focus. And you will see like the, the color just blurring out and creating a really interesting effect. So that's it. Simple trick today, simple stuff. We're now in February, a lot of stuff is going on. I'm gonna make sure to let you guys know more about all of this. Remember that if you wanna learn about not this particular trick because it's not included, but a lot of other really, really cool tricks, we have the Cinematic Lightning course uh, where we explain a lot of Arnold things and you can check that one for free in Skillshare. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here and Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. And there we go. Remember that we have our portfolio open, a portfolio review open. So if you want to submit your portfolio for me to review, we're going to be doing that next weekend. Uh, make sure to check the link down here and uh, I'll be happy to take a look at your stuff. Also, um, we changed, we slightly changed the time for our uploads here uh, for the channel. Let us know what you think. If it's that good, is it worse, better? Um, we're still going to upload a video every day, but the, again, the times have changed a little bit, so let me know if that works for you guys. Remember that we also have our live stream on Mondays, and uh, we have, uh, or we, if you want to help us, rather, if you want to help us, any like, share, comment, or subscribe really, really helps. Even hitting the little bell icon down here, it's really, really useful. If this tip has been useful for you, maybe we can do a little bit of an exchange and I can get a little bit of uh, a little bit of extra support down there on the comments. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Have a good day, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.